I'm Ronald Sacco, and today I will be talking about Leonardo da Vinci's inventions, because while his art is interesting, I've always found his inventions far more fascinating. But with the flying machines, parachutes, diving suit, machine gun, tank, and robotic knight. So let's get to it. First off, the flying machines. Leonardo is relatively well known for his design of the aerial screw and glider, but what most people forget or don't even know about is the ornithopter. The design is very similar to his glider. Both of these designs were based on the wings of a bird. Only the ornithopter would allow you to make the wings flap through the use of a crank. And it actually is capable of flight, assuming it is already in the air. A good takeoff would be difficult to achieve, however. Now, to touch on the glider, it was functionally similar to the ornithopter, but did not have a crank. So the wings wouldn't flap. This made operating the glider easier than the ornithopter, but less reliable for maintaining altitudes. This design would work but without the addition of a rudder, the glider would simply turn sideways and fall. Now, the last of his flying machines is the aerial screw, which I imagine most of you have heard of. It is functionally similar to the modern-day helicopter in concept. It gets its lift from the rotation of a linen pinwheel, and allows air pressure to build up and let it take off into the sky. However, unlike the glider or ornithopter, this design wouldn't work if tested. Lastly, while this isn't a flying machine, it does stick with the air theme I have going on, so the parachute. Another of da Vinci's designs, which is designed as a pyramidal shaped cloth that is nearly identical to the modern parachutes. Leonardo's design was made to, as he puts it, allow a man to throw himself down from any great height without suffering any injury. Moving from the air to the earth, or particularly the sea, let's touch on the diving suit. The design of the diving suit was based around the idea of underwater sabotage, such as when enemy ships would invade Venice. The suits used floating bells or wine bladders full of air to breathe while wearing glass goggles to see. However, while the design was practical, it was too slow a tactic to be used effectively against any enemy at the time. However, nowadays, sabotaging enemy ships is a common tactic in naval warfare. Now, Leonardo did not enjoy making designs for war machines. But if you're familiar with the term starving artist, you can understand why he had to uh, put himself in this position, well with him having to support both himself and his pupils. Under Cesare Borgia, he was forced to make some game-changing weapons, of which I will only be talking about two, the machine gun and the tank. Leonardo's machine gun, or the 33-barreled organ, design was built with three rows of 11 muskets. Each row would be rotated out each time it was fired. For example, while one row was firing, the other two would be either cooling off or being reloaded. This allowed Brit to fire at a fairly rapid pace. Now, this footage I'm showing in the background has definitely taken some liberties with the way it's supposed to function, but that's more for the sake of the game it was put in. But you can probably see why this would be a game changer. Now, on to one of his coolest and most lethal designs, the armored tank. The design is a cone-shaped shell equipped with 36 guns and was meant to be operated by 8 men propelling it with cranks. It would, hypothetically, be able to survive in any battle while going at a slow pace. It probably is fortunate that these designs never got built. I can't really imagine what the world would be like if they had, whether it be good or bad. Though, before I move on, I feel I should mention that almost all of Leonardo's designs had a flaw intentionally placed into them. So, even if the machines were constructed, they would not function as intended. Okay, this is probably my favorite of Leonardo's designs, and possibly one of the lesser known ones, the Robotic Knight. The design for the knight stemmed from Leonardo's fascination with the human anatomy, and the hours he had spent dissecting corpses. The way the design works is through a series of pulleys and cables that are distributed through a set of armor, and was capable of basic human gestures such as sitting, independent movement of arms, raising its visor, moving its neck, and unlike many of Leonardo's designs, this one actually got built, and was used as a form of entertainment for his more noble acquaintances. However, this build no longer exists, as far as we know, so much of the knowledge of what it could do is speculative. 
Though in recent years we have seen as parts of his robotic knight integrated into designs of his planetary space robots. That's something. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this video and that it has made you more interested in the topic. This video pretty much covers the extent of my knowledge, but feel free to talk to me about it if you're interested. Maybe I forgot something. I know I shouldn't use this as an opportunity to self-promote, but I will probably be posting this video up on YouTube. If any of you want to show it to other people you know, or if you're interested in checking out some of my other videos, or maybe you'd like me to do more research on the subject and create a follow-up video or something. In which case, you could expect this video to show up on the channel link on air on YouTube. Thanks for staying awake, even if I didn't.